In a previous video, we tested some Kevlar body armor that some folks from Hong Kong sent us to see if it would actually work or not. And much to our surprise, this piece of Kevlar actually worked very well. Now we had some reservations about this Kevlar simply because they purchased it off eBay, off an auction. And if you've ever purchased anything from eBay, you never know if you're going to get the real McCoy or a counterfeit. Luckily, the unbranded, uncertified, possibly made in someone's garage, definitely sketchy eBay Kevlar would probably save your life. Since the Hong Kongers sent us two of these panels, that gives us another chance to test these, this time against real police body armor. Welcome back, Talflator folks. Jeff and OG out here with you today with something real special. And I don't mean Taylor Swift's Christmas album. We're actually going to bring you something a little different today. Uh, we're going to be testing some body armor. We have uh, Doug's dressed up right now in a standard old police package body armor. This is about a thousand dollar set um, by Second Chance. Comes with the carrier on the outside. The carrier has no ballistic uh, capabilities. It's just a piece of fabric that holds the Kevlar panels. Um, inside Doug's carrier, he has a front panel and a back panel. And then this one actually has even an extra little uh, level 3A insert. But What's it called, a trauma pad? It's a little trauma plate, yeah. I have one of these uh, in my work vest. It's like a hard ceramic plate, but Doug's is a uh, soft, flexible little panel here that is an option for tucking inside. It's uh, designed to go over the most vital of your vitals. I wouldn't want to get shot around it, but at least it's right there over the, uh, the important bits and pieces. So the purpose of being out here, we're going to try this police vest. And when we show you this police vest, we're going to take this carrier off and just attach the vest to Doug so that you can actually see the Kevlar absorbing the rounds. We have a number of firearms out here today that we're going to shoot um, all the way from 22, 9 millimeter, 40 caliber, 45 and 10 millimeter. And then of course we have the rifle rounds. We have an AK-47, an AR-15. We're going to put all those rounds into Doug's Kevlar vest because we're wanting to test them against the ballistic panels, the, the soft body armor. That uh, This stuff comes off of eBay. It was sent to Jeff by some anonymous donors from Hong Kong and um, comes off of eBay. It has no rating on it though. As you can see here, there's no stickers on it. We don't know what level of rating. Uh, most body armor, Jeff's going to throw in a picture here. Most body armor comes with a label on it that says uh, pretty much what it's going to stop, whether it's level 2, level 3, level 3A, which is the most common police body armor. This stuff doesn't have any kind of a rating. So there's, there's ratings on the on the uh, auction. I think it's 3A. The it's, auction that's says, up to 44 Magnum. Yeah. So so um, you might have seen from a previous test that it stops some 38 and some 9 millimeter rounds, but we're going to take that up a little bit more and see what these panels will actually stop. Um, Doug's going to wear these for us, not us. And uh, these are soft panels. They're flexible. They could be worn under a shirt if you had some type of a carrier or a way of strapping these things on. They also would be good inserts to throw inside of a backpack or a book bag or any kind of anything like that for stopping handgun rounds. We don't expect them to stop rifle rounds, but we'll shoot some of those through them for you also, so you can see what uh, rifle rounds do. And then uh, we also have oh, there's one of the labels on this little Barbie-sized vest. <laughs> a little label on here. This is how police officers and military know who who, t who normally tests stuff like that. The He's National probably... Institute of Justice, so they call it an NIJ level testing. NIJ is the National Institute of Justice. They test, they usually rate things by level 2, 2A, 3, 3A, and uh, as I mentioned, 3A is, 3A or 3, oddly enough, 3A is not as uh, protective as 3, oh. but um, it kind of seems to go backwards in, in the way it's uh, described. But um, the police level body armor is usually just designed to stop up to 44 Magnum which is pretty much your your most common powerful handgun round that you're going to run into out there. So, uh, not very effective against rifle rounds, and we'll show you why here in a second. But um, we also have with us today, sent to Jeff by Chris, we have a military panel. This is a soft body panel that the military uses, but we've also got an AR-500 plate strapped in here too. So this is very similar to what uh, our U.S. military guys are carrying overseas the metal or metal or ceramic plate on top of a soft body plant panel draped over them on a uh, very heavy though 
it is very heavy and if you carry in two of these and as well as kidney protectors it can get to be a really really heavy vest so I've got an active shooter vest at work that's like 25 pounds oh the thing's crazy but um, anyway let's get to shooting some of these um, we're out here on a we're out here on the Jim Morrison rifle range today so we don't have to worry about uh, anything downrange we're in a safe spot we've got an embankment behind us in case some of these rounds do make it through and we're gonna see we appreciate Doug uh, volunteering to stand in today I was gonna do it I told Jeff I would do it but no, uh, you never do that <laughs> never, <laughs> never do test that. your body armor on on your friend no never test yourself only that guy from second chance shoots himself with his uh, that is so irresponsible but his own body armor yeah don't because it just encourages other people to do stuff like that yeah ridiculous folks don't try any of this stuff at home don't ever tape phone books to yourself and shoot them dictionaries nothing like that yep. this is silly let uh, professionals do it mm -hmm. us and Paul Harrell <laughs> so uh, hey let's get to it we're gonna start with some uh, 22 and work our way up and see what these rounds will do me too long rifle ready yeah in our previous video a lot of viewers wanted us to test 22 long rifle on Kevlar so there you go nine millimeter hollow point when you're ready I'm ready here we go we were surprised that a lot of viewers thought that nine millimeter hollow points would penetrate better than a full metal jacket as we used in our first video so there you go 40 caliber hollow point here we go 40 Smith & Wesson is used by a lot of law enforcement agencies, so we wanted to use that in our test too. This is official uh, police issue 40 caliber. 45 hollow point. 45 ACP, all right, not long Colt. Ready? <laughs> I'm ready. 45 ACP is a pretty common caliber. It's big, hard hitting, and gets the job done. 10 millimeter. This is a uh, hollow point. 10 millimeter is more powerful or has more energy than a 357. Not as much energy as a 44 Magnum. So, when you're ready, I'm ready. Wow, Woo! I'd say so. There's that energy. 10 millimeter is basically 40 caliber on steroids, a lot faster, a lot more energy. And we use a hollow point because people think those penetrate more. AR-15. Okay. Soft point, 5.56 five, rounds. What are the chances of this stopping it? Zero. Okay. It will go right through. Okay, gotcha. It would go through five panels easily. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Ready? Here we go. Now you have to look real close. It's a tiny bullet going really fast. But as you can see, that bullet went right through the Kevlar without really slowing down very much. AK-47. It's an actual Chinese, it's a Chinese vacation and Chinese ammo. Yep. In case it ever gets that in Hong Kong, that's what they'll be, probably be using. All right, when you're ready. I'm ready. Just like the 5.56 five, round, the 7.62 by 39 steel core round went right through our Kevlar vest. The vest is not rated to stop this, so this is no surprise at all. Here's what we got. As you, as you probably noticed by now, the, uh, the vest wrinkling around those handgun rounds is because it was actually stopping those handgun rounds. It captures all the energy like a catcher's mitt catches a baseball, for those of you here in the U.S. AR round and an AK round are flying much too fast and have uh, smaller, what do you call it, sectional density where there's a, it's a little pointed nose and it's flying way too fast for this vest. It's going to pierce right through and you can probably tell on, on Doug here tore right out the back of his little shirt there, so. You may have to pull the vest off and, and show what it looks like on the back side of the vest. Yeah, we can do that for you. Yep. Pretty easily. Hey, <laughs> Just prove that the, the pistol rounds did not go through. One of the pistol rounds went through. Here is your AR-15 round and your AK-47 round. Both of them slid right through. There's no, no lead in there. Now we're going to show you the same calibers fired in the same order against the eBay soft body armor. It's and weird. do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's going to stop it as good as a standard old U.S. police vest? Or is it going to fail? Fail miserably. You 
You decide. You decide. <laughs> you be the judge. All right, but let's get to it before the sun goes down. 22, 22. Rifle, Hong Kong vest. Now this that's not. Let's make it clear that it's not made in Hong Kong. Oh, I know. It's it's, it's uh, listed as being made in the United States. Uh, by an eBay seller that docks me and actually called me on the phone to complain about something. But we won't get into that kind of creepiness. It was very, very uncomfortable, you know, because I have an unlisted phone number because I'm affiliated with uh, a police myself. I didn't know if you know that or not. When you, uh, when, you, when you find him standing outside your bathroom window smoking cigarettes at 2 in the morning, <laughs> that's when it's gotten creepy. That's, yeah, that's true. I think we're okay, though. All right, when you're ready for 22. 22, ready. Again, just for the sake of the people that thought that a 22 would go through Kevlar, there you go. A very easy bullet to stop. What's that? Nine millimeter hollow points. Okay. When you're ready? I'm ready. Woo! Different reaction. Besides using hollow points in this test, we're also using pistols in this test. The first test we used 10 inch barrels, which gave us higher velocity. 40 caliber, hollow point. I'm ready. Here we go. Woo. Wow. Whoa. So that transferred a lot more energy to Doug. <laughs> Definitely. So far we're seeing very little visual difference between the stopping ability of our eBay Kevlar and the stopping ability of the commercial uh, police issue vest. 45 ACP, 45 hollow point. One thing that is very notable in this test is the location of where the bullet actually hit, about one inch from the edge. In a minute, we'll talk about the significance of that. 10 millimeter. Even with the very hard hitting 10 millimeter, the eBay Kevlar vest probably would have saved your life still. The amount of energy actually hitting your body is very similar to the police issue vest. AR-15! A soft point bullet has a small amount of exposed lead at the nose, which causes expansion. And this bullet still went through both of our vests. AK-47! Ready? I'm ready. Just like with our expensive uh, police issue Kevlar, our eBay Kevlar had no chance of stopping this full metal jacket AK round. We were pleasantly surprised, actually, that all of the pistol rounds were stopped by this little panel. It's quite a bit thinner. It's also a little more rigid. It's tough to explain, but it's almost like the layers in there are glued together instead of sewn together on our soft body armor. So it's a little more rigid, like it holds a, holds a shape. So you saw a little bit more back face deformation, and we'll show you a little demo of that in just a second, too. But these rounds, when they punched in, they left a little bit more of a, I don't know what you call it, a mark on the back. Stop the 22, 9, 40, 45, 45 came tumbling out. There's your 45 round for you. And the 10 millimeter round surprisingly was stopped by this soft body armor and came tumbling out later when we shot it with a rifle. AR of course went right through, AK went right through. Douglas is here to attest. The rounds punched right through and out of his back. So we didn't expect it to stop the rifle rounds, but we just want to show you that it's pretty consistent with expensive US police body armor. So pleasantly surprised with this lower cost eBay option. No name, generic, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's- Larry's Vet yeah. Company. I think it's name's Steve. Steve. I don't know his last name, but Steve's I don't want to dox a guy. <laughs> Steve and Larry. That sucks when people dox you. So what we're gonna do though, real quick, I want to show you the difference between how that soft, that police soft body armor and this soft body armor, the energy transfer that comes out through the back. We're gonna set this up against the clay block. We're gonna shoot just a nine millimeter round into the police body armor first, and then into this. And I wanna show you the difference in the amount of trauma that a guy would take if he was wearing a vest. Yes, he would live, but he'd probably be hurting a little bit more with this stuff than with that stuff, a little more Maybe, so, maybe, maybe not. Well, again, I'll test Don't. it out for you if you want. I've been wrong before. It is but... Friday, I got a day, a day or two to recuperate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's give that a try and then we might have one more test for you. Yep. Okay, what's the test? Nine millimeter hollow point versus the vest. And we're going to
going to see how much back face deformation is captured by that clay block. This is the eBay piece of body armor. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ooh. In the U.S. Okay, they're both made in the U.S. That's both not, made in the U.S. Yeah, I can't confuse infer. people. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. Both our eBay Kevlar and the police issue Kevlar are comprised of layers and layers, many layers of Kevlar stacked on top of each other. The thickness of the eBay Kevlar is about 6.5 millimeters, while the Safari Land measures around 8 millimeters, only 1.5 millimeters thicker. We'll see if that makes a difference though. Let's sink it in there. I'm going to sink it in there. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> that is what she said. Can you see it from that side? Kind of, yeah. It's. Right. I don't know what kind of depth you got there. From my angle, it appears to be about an inch and a quarter deep. Okay, gotcha. Um, that's not millimeters or anything, but uh, inch and a quarter deep on this U.S. body armor, how it punched this clay. Okay. Again, <clears throat> does not mean it would punch into a human an inch and a quarter. It's still going to hurt. It is going to hurt. Make sure you keep your heart. Because you got bones in there that might break. Right. Store your heart two inches back from your chest. Yeah. All right. Plunge that ding, 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 thing ding, ding, in there. Ding, ding. Now, if I had to measure, it's looking to me about an inch and a half. So a little bit deeper. Okay. I mean, pretty unscientific, but comparable here. It's about an inch and a half deep on this hole. A little deeper. And you can visually tell that one's a little deeper than that one right there. Yeah. Pretty, pretty obvious just by the shadows. I'll put metric conversions in there. What's what? What, what are the uh, limits or whatever on normal body armor so the specs? The standard, and of course you've got to have a, a certain kind of clay, and it's got to be on a little uh, clay, what they call a clay box. They set it on a mannequin and they shoot it to test the back face deformation. This, on actual U.S. body armor, the standard is, I believe it's 44 millimeters of back face deformation is what is what is allowed. That's about the depth that they allow body armor to flex into your body. Um, I was recently out on a test where the body armor was shot with everything clear up to a 50 caliber and the worst they could get was 37 millimeters of back face deformation. So what, what brand of armor was that? That was a Safari Land project, product. Okay. And, uh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's a, hard, it's a hard shell plate. It's kind of a new thing coming out. Very, very expensive, but impressive with how much stuff it will stop. Okay. Super, super. It's going to be a lot more than... Uh, yes. $110 or whatever yes. this costs on eBay. It's very, very thin. It's rigid though, kind of like this, but it's very, very thin. It's like wearing a paper plate. So wow. It's kind of crazy. Nice so, technology. Yeah, we're coming along. There's going to be a day where you put on a cellophane shirt and it will <laughs> stop the round. Actually, some of you may wear a cellophane <laughs> shirt on Friday night. I don't know. Who am I to judge? All right, folks. So you've seen the difference here between a very expensive piece of professional police body armor and a very homemade style uh, piece of eBay available body armor that was quite a bit cheaper. So um, pretty impressive though what this stuff will do. It's got its limitations. It wouldn't be good for wearing made into an actual vest for duty use all day long. But if you need to slip this panel into a shirt, into a backpack, into a messenger bag and tote it along with you as a maybe an active shooter uh, protection item if you believe that you can get that messenger bag up in front of your vitals. It's not a bad option for the price. He does make bigger ones, too. I want him to make me a tent out of this stuff. Climb inside. It is pretty well known that if you shoot body armor near the edge, and Jeff's got a marking here of two inches and one inch, if you shoot it near the edge, and the manufacturers usually recommend that the, uh, that the danger zone is inside the two inch mark, but if you shoot it too close to the edge, the body armor is actually going to buckle around that round and kind of allow it to squirt on past the body armor and it could endanger the uh, the person who's wearing the body armor. We shot 22 into the edge of this, which you can see is about a little over an inch away from the edge, and the 45 is is a, an inch away from the edge, and it stopped both rounds perfectly. And then uh, we had one, let's see, I, I ran the 10 millimeter inboard a little bit just on purpose so that it didn't fold up too much. 40 caliber in here is a, is a few inches in from the edge, stopped it just fine. So. Um, because this is more rigid, I'm not as worried about this stuff uh, squirting past the edge and leaking into my guts. Well, there you go. The inexpensive eBay generic body armor performed pretty darn well. 
But would you trust your life to something you bought off eBay? That's up to you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching, for rating and all that. And if you have any comments, please leave them. And just as a channel update, in case you're curious, uh, we were doing really well a few weeks up till Christmas as far as videos uh, not getting demonetized by YouTube. And then bam, Christmas morning, they started demonetizing videos again. I was almost to the point where I was going to say, hey, if you want to ease off on your donations, this is the time to do it. But it looks like 2020 is just going to be another repeat of 2019 as far as demonetized videos. So thank you so much for continuing to support our channel, and we'll catch you next time.